quieter. So, so diesels clatter and they're noisy, but if I switch it over to the waste vegetable oil, that clattering mostly goes away. Mm. And then when it's driving down the road, it sounds, it, it sounds like a sewing machine. Mm. So, I mean, you know, it's got some diesel clatter to it, but, um, but basically it, it's, it runs great. I went to the cities and back on two quarts of diesel fuel, and my last tank I did this experiment where I filled up with biodiesel here, and I switched over. It takes me 3.7 miles to switch over to waste vegetable oil to be hot enough to do that. And it takes me about two miles to switch it back. I have to shut it down, so I can't I can't shut it off on waste on the waste vegetable oil because it's too thick in it, and it'll get stuck. It, it, it won't start on that. So, um, so I have to make sure that it always starts on diesel. So I have to shut it down in diesel, and I start it on diesel. And once it's hot enough, I switch it over to the waste vegetable oil. And um, so my I went with I filled the tank 18.3 gallons in the main tank, and before I had to fill it again, and I drove for three days with the reserve light on and the gauge below empty, but I was just using it to start it. And I wasn't keep tra keeping track of my waste vegetable oil, but out of that single tank, I had 1,507 um, miles. So um, it's cool, and I built everything. You know, you can buy kits and all that stuff, but, and I built everything, and you know, in this system that you see, I probably have about $400. I have more than that because I abandoned a whole bunch of schemes and, and uh, redid a bunch of things. My seven-year-old son soldered all these fittings. So I had the torch there, and he was like, "Now, Dad, now!" and and uh, and yeah, now. And then he so yeah, so we soldered all these things. So it was a great project to do together, and and it's um you know it's a good thing to do. As uh, Native American, you know, I I feel that you know our role has always been to be stewards of the land, and um, and I haven't been doing a very good job of that, and uh, so it's time to change. And it's good to go. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So this, so this is waste vegetable oil. So this is once the restaurants get done with, with, um, with cooking everything, with frying everything, then, then you know usually they dump this into a big canister in the back, and then a rendering person or somebody usually charges them to come and pick this back up. So, um, and then so Thomas gets that stuff right there is from Pizza Luce, and that is this is this is the gold standard here. So you can see that there's nothing in here. I got 20 gallons of this from, from Thomas before, and usually I filter it and I pour it through these filter things, and then I end up with this much in the bottom of the thing. I just kept pouring and pouring and pouring, and pretty soon I had the thing upside down, and I used everything. This is this is really nice. So this this is hydrogenated oil. Restaurants like to use this because it has a sm higher smoke point. So this stuff this stuff starts to smoke at 450 degrees, so they can run their they can run their fryers hotter, and this stuff starts to smoke at 420. 25 degrees, so it's about 25 degrees difference. So, but it's not any. It's, this is not any more expensive. So, and this is actually somewhat better for people. It's got less, you know, trans fats and all that other stuff in there. So, you know, so I'm trying to get my suppliers to switch over to this, and they will. You know, I think they will. You know, once they, um, I've talked to them a little bit. So, so, and you can see here that this hydrogenated part settles out. So when, so yeah, and this is why I let it settle. So I let it settle for two to four weeks. And it gets the French fry pieces out into the bottom usually, but then that then that heavy stuff sinks and it compacts really hard. So then I made this little. My wife's aunt came up with this like a gravy separator thing. So I, I took a Dremel and I cut out the lid of these thing, this thing right here. And these things are always the same, so it always ends up in the same spot. So it ends up with you know I end up with this little divider right here, and I pour it out, and that stops the heavy stuff from coming out. So as soon as I get to that point. When I'm, when I'm filtering it into that barrel, then I stop and I pour it all into another thing and then I settle it again for another month and I use the dregs until there's nothing left in there. And then, you know, I'll probably end up hauling that to a rendering place or, um, so far I've been burning brush piles with it. But, um, so, you know, but, but you know, if I, got, if I could get my suppliers to switch to non-hydrogenated oil, then I could use everything and there would be less, even less waste. So, um, so that's it. So, um, and this is the way I get it, and these, you know, these, so these things are kind of sticky and, and messy, and I don't know how my wife puts up with me, because I have 17 of these in our basement right now, and um, waiting and settling and, and pouring into barrels, and I've got probably another 17 of these in the garage that are empty that I don't quite know what to do with yet, so um, that's it, so 
That's my special one.